Hello, I'm Christian, that's my friend Jeremy, and that's my friend John. If you've been watching our recent videos, you would know who these guys are. And you would know, you should know who I am if you're a subscriber to my channel. But, um, we're doing a movie review, and the movie we want to review is the 1948 horror comedy Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein, which acts as both a sequel to the Universal movies and a parody of the Universal films. And this is the final film of what I guess you could call Universal's Monster Mash trilogy, which started with House of Frankenstein and then House of Dracula, and this is easily the best of the three films that feature the Frankenstein monster, the Wolfman, and Dracula together in one movie. And I think this is the only one that actually does the crossover right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Now, this is the eighth film in Universal's Frankenstein series. It's the sixth film in Universal's Dracula series, and I think this is the, uh, yeah, that's the fifth film of Universal's Wolfman series. What do you guys think of Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein? Oh, I love it. It's so great. Yeah. It's definitely, in my opinion, probably the perfect horror comedy. But what do you think of this movie? It is. It, it combines my favorite genres, horror and comedy. That's what makes it a great film, especially when they parody the uh, the characters. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. very funny. And, but what I like about it, though, is it is a parody of those movies, but it could still work as part of the series as well. I mean, it's highly, highly debatable whether this is actually in continuity with the other films, but at the same time, though, it still sort of works as part of that, even if you could debate the continuity. I can see that, but at the same time, I really can say it's just more like a comedy parry rather than the, the set in continuity. That's just my opinion, though. Alright. But what do you think? Do you think this could be in continuity? Mm, I mean, possibly, although because I'm really a big fan of uh, Lawrence Talbot's happy ending in House of Dracula, I kind of like to think that it's not. Yeah, this is actually... There was a book that was actually written recently. I think it was called A Werewolf Remembers, and I don't... I forgot who wrote the book, uh, but it actually acts as sort of like the diary of Lawrence Talbot, and it takes all the films into continuity, even this film. Now, what the plot of Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein is, it's about these two baggage clerks named Chick Young and Wilbur Gray, played by Bud Abbott and Lou Costello, who have to take these crates to a wax museum. The crates contain the bodies of Dracula and the Frankenstein monster. Now, they think these are just wax figures, but it turns out it's actually Dracula and actually the Frankenstein monster, and they both come to life in front of Wilbur, who tries to tell Chick about this, but Chick and nobody else would believe him. And it turns out that Dracula wants to replace the monster's brain with a brain that's so simple that the monster will have no will of his own and would be completely controlled by Dracula. And it turns out that Wilbur's girlfriend actually secretly works for Dracula. Now, Lawrence Talbot, who of course is the Wolfman, comes to America to try to stop Dracula, and he tries to get Chicken Wilbur's help, and they reluctantly agree to help him stop Dracula. But of course, since Talbot is a werewolf, there are points in the movie where he also turns into the Wolfman, which poses as a problem for the protagonist of the film, and it turns out that it's actually Wilbur's brain that Dracula wants to put inside the body of the monster. Now, in the film, the two main characters are, of course, played by Bud Abbott and Lou Costello, who were very famous comedians from the time, and there's a reason they're still remembered today, because they were just so great together, and they played off each other really well, and this is going to sound like a shot at them, but, like, really in the movie, even though they're playing characters, they're really playing themselves, essentially. You're seeing the movie for them, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But what, how do you think they work in the movie? Oh, they work very well together. I mean, Luke Costello is definitely the main funny one, and uh, Bud Abbott is the, the great straight man. You know, he's like absolutely. Just, he's just constantly getting so pissed off at Costello for all his nonsense. And I just love how they both react to the horror in the film, which is why I think this is one of the most perfect horror comedies. I would say it's mostly a comedy, but there are def. The horror definitely comes through with a lot of it, though, but they play off the horror so hilariously in the film. They do. Uh, and that's... Oh, they're, 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 they're excellent. They're just so funny. Like, they're, they're, they have, like, great chemistry when they work together. Like, 
being a uh, not not only like when you were mentioning how like uh, iconic they are like be, being uh, like a like a baseball fan going to uh, the Cooperstown where they have like the famous who's on first routine it's just so classic. In the movie Glenn Strange plays Frankenstein's monster, he also played the monster in House of Frankenstein and House of Dracula. Bela Lugosi plays Dracula, and this is actually the first time he played Dracula since he played the character in Universal's 1931 adaptation of Bram Stoker's Dracula. And it's funny how Lugosi is perhaps the most famous Dracula, yet he only played the character twice in film. And in this movie, he very much plays the character as more of a parody of his character from the 31 film, and he's actually quite funny in the film. In the movie, Lon Chaney Jr. once again plays Lawrence Talbot and the Wolfman, and even though it's debatable whether this one is actually in continuity with the other films, Chaney really is playing the same character he played in those other films, and he's still very sympathetic in this movie movie despite the fact that this is a comedy. In some ways he steals this movie in my opinion because he's the only one who's actually taken his role seriously, like even Lugosi hams a lot of it up, but Cheney doesn't. And I actually think that's funnier because you have Abbott and Costello acting like such goofballs while you have Cheney really playing it straight. Vincent Price also has a little voice cameo at the end of this film as the Invisible Man, but it's just a little joke at the end to the film. It really has nothing to do with the main plot. The movie also stars Lenore Albert as Sandra Mornay, who is Wilbert's girlfriend in the film and is Dracula's familiar. She's also very much the mad scientist of this film and in some ways takes on the role of Dr. Frankenstein in this movie. Jane Randolph plays a character named Joan Raymond. Charles Bradstreet plays a character named Professor Stevens, and Frank Ferguson plays a jackass named Mr. McDougal. So besides Abbott and Costello and the characters they played in this movie, what do you think of the other characters in the film and the acting in the film? Oh, it's great. You know, I love, uh, I love it all, you know, especially, you know, it's wonderful to see Bela Lugosi return as Dracula. Yeah. Would you agree with me, though, that he definitely hams it up in this movie and makes it more of a comedy performance than a horror performance? I guess in some parts, yeah. yeah. Whereas I think Lon Chaney Jr. was playing it straight, and yeah. he was playing it as not a comedy at all, yeah. which I think works oh, so yeah. great for the movie, because he's still the same character. Yeah, he's it's just like whenever... Abner and Costello are like goofing it up and he's trying to be serious. You could tell he's really pissed off. And Costello just goes, eh, between you and me, sometimes I'd become a wolf myself and he'd take like, <laughs> that's an insult to him, to Lawrence. Yeah. I love the scene where he turns into the wolf man and goes into uh, Lawrence Talbot's hotel room uh, when uh, yeah. Wilbur does that and just the fact that the Wolfman's right there and can't seem to actually catch him is just hilarious. <laughs> it because, is. And he doesn't even realize what's happening. No. Uh, and then when he's leaving the room with the orange, he's like, I wonder if he counted these. I also want to point out how, in this movie, the monster speaks like he did in Bride. Yeah. You know, it's, although it's not as, uh, you know, eloquent. Or, well, I mean, it's not really eloquent when he speaks in Bride, but as you said, meaningful, yeah. though. It's just like, monster. I love the scene where, like, after uh, Wilbur escapes from the basement with... Uh, Franken the Frankenstein monster and Dracula, and he's telling them about it, and all of a sudden Dracula comes walking down the stairs, posing as the other guy, and he's like, oh, do be careful, like, yeah. <laughs> about when he's, like, saying, oh, he stumbled down the stairs, and... He uh, fell down the stairs. Yeah. It's, it's, it's also funny, like, when, like, when he goes, like, behind that, 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 uh, that wall, and, <laughs> you know, and like, he, you know, he... He sees the monster, he sees Dracula, he keeps like running to get sick, and every time he goes back to the other wall, like they always keep like you know, like a scan. Yeah. <laughs> and then the last time he's like, Where are they goes? They must be in there and he goes, I <laughs> And what did you think of the character of Mr. McDougal? Oh, he was an he idiot. Was an he was a jerk. Yeah. I wanted to punch get him. Get me my crates! I mean I get yes, you're a businessman, but seriously, you don't have to be an idiot to you know Well you mean it's not so much that he was an idiot, he was more so just an ass. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. I, I do love the scene where like uh where Wilbur's telling him, I'm a union man. I only work 16 hours a day. A union man works eight hours a day. I belong to two unions. <laughs> I know my uh, Lou Costello impression was god awful. Sorry about that. Part during the costume party where yeah. McDougal attacks uh, Costello and. 
but I haven't, you know, wants to call the cops on him. He says, you don't have a witness, and he just says, I'm not a witness. Here, watch this, to some random stranger. <laughs> and then he gets the guy to do it again. Yeah, I can't, that's just ripped so it far. It's like, oh, hey, can you do that again? It's like, why would he listen to him and do it again when there's a witness? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, actually, that, that was, actually, if you watch their other, like, uh, comedy skits, that was a thing sometimes, you know, like, he hit Blue Cus, like, Blue Cus was always, like, getting beaten, abused, and being where... At the beginning, where he uh, tells Costello, "Okay, now get on top of those crates," <laughs> and then he like gets throws him the rope, and he's like, "It's like he enjoys tormenting him." He's like, "I know." The crates, you know, go back and forth, and the that little fella's impossible. Now, I do want to mention that after this movie and the success of this film, because this movie was a huge success. Uh, Bud Abbott and Luke Costello went on to be in other horror comedies like Abbott and Costello meet Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Abbott and Costello meet the Invisible Man, and Abbott and Costello meet the Mummy. Can you imagine if they did something like that today, like make the Wayans brothers meet Jason Boys? Oh, <laughs> that would not work. So yeah, that was our review of Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. I hope you enjoyed this review. Uh, my next movie review is going to be on the 1933 classic, King Kong, and hopefully these two guys will be able to join me for that review. Looking forward to it. Sounds awesome.